Hey everybody! Today we decided to cook a giant Skittle. Let's open the packet and see what it's made of. Inside, there are a bunch of small candies. If we crush them, it becomes clear that there is a candy coating around a soft, chewy inside. Now let's buy everything we need to cook a giant Skittles. First up, you'll need a lot of sugar, a box of oil, we go to the produce section, and we take out quite a lot of lemons. We choose the largest and ripest watermelons and put them in the cart. We'll need a total of seven watermelons. We pull up to the checkout with two carts full. We unload them. Our check came out to $162. In addition to this, we bought another 30 kilograms of glucose syrup. To make it easier to work with, we'll pour it into a large saucepan. I ordered something special for this video. These are semicircles made out of acrylic. They will serve as our huge Skittles mold. We fill the mold with oil and smear it around with a brush. Let's unroll the parchment paper. We make pretty deep cuts along the edges and carefully put it inside the mold. Thanks to the oil, the parchment sticks well to the mold. That way we cover up all the inside of the semicircle. Done! It turned out great. Now we put the saucepan on the scales. We put 150 grams of glucose syrup into it. And pour 350 grams of sugar into that. Now we pour in 100 milliliters of water. We put all this on the stove and cook the syrup. Be sure to use a thermometer. We need to wait until the temperature reaches 147 degrees Celsius. Done. Now let's squeeze a little purple food dye into a teaspoon and mix it into our candy coating. The acrylic molds don't really like changes in temperature, so to heat them up, we'll turn on really hot water and fill a bath. We lower the mold into the water, and only now do we pour in the candy coating. Yes, we'll be filling the mold for a long time, so we decided to make a double portion. So we'll be doing two equal saucepans at once. Put it on the stove. We cook up the mixture and add in the food coloring. Let's send the second mold into the bath. Pour the coating along the walls. Well, we cooked and molded the coating for seven hours. At some point, it began to set crookedly. I had to gradually cover everything up. We returned the molds to the studio. We've already made the outer layer for the candy. Now all we need to do is make the insides. There are many different Skittles flavors. We decided to come up with our own, watermelon. To help out with this, we have a hefty mechanical press. We transfer the watermelons to the sink and wash them thoroughly. We put the clean watermelons in a huge bowl. We install a trough under the press and put a metal barrel on top. We take a watermelon, cut off the end, and then do the same to the other side. 
Next, we prep it up vertically and remove the entirety of the green peel. Now all we have is the pulp. We throw it into the barrel. Cover the top of the metal disc. Take another watermelon and clean it the same way. We send this to the barrel too. And cover it as well. In advance, we substitute a 20-liter empty cylinder at the bottom and put a funnel into it. We begin to turn the screw. We make sure that it enters the groove of the metal disc. The juice is squeezed out very evenly. It goes into the trough and drains down into the container. We twist the press with all our might. Two watermelons didn't give us enough juice. So we decided to peel three watermelons at once and cut each of them into pieces. We load them into the barrel and covering them with metal discs. Squeeze out the juice. We clean another watermelon. Squeeze the juice out of it too. Now we have almost a full container but I want my Skittles to be sour. Let's squeeze the juice out of the lemons as well. First, we roll them with our hands on the table to loosen up the insides. Then we cut and squeeze the juice using our hands. All the juice will be sent through a sieve into the container. By the time we get to the studio, the juice has separated, and the red part was at the bottom. We decided to try it, and the taste hasn't really changed at all. I mean, real watermelon juice can be transparent. We shake the container well, and the color comes back. For the inside of the candy, we need four pots. We pour 150 milliliters of watermelon juice into each of them. Then 200 grams of glucose syrup. And 300 grams of sugar into each. We put all this under the stove. Be sure to put a thermometer in one of the pots. The candy is boiling and you can't touch it at all. Just wait until it reaches 123 degrees. Open the butter. We cut it into small pieces. and one by one, send it into the pots, along with a teaspoon of white dye. Now we mix it up. The candy is ready. Just have to pour it into the molds. Oh, you have no idea how long we've been cooking all this. A day and a half. Finally, the molds are completely filled. Only a day later, the caramel completely cools down and becomes the desired soft consistency. Using a knife, we chip off the uneven edges of the candy. One half is covered with parchment. We put a board on top and turn it over. We remove the mold. Tear off the parchment. and turn over our candy half. The same should be done with the second one. Now, the most dangerous thing is to attach the two halves to each other. Then the worst thing imaginable happened. One half slipped and we heard a crunch, which really scared us. We are trying to connect the two halves. So we tear off the parchment and see the candy coating has split. We were really upset. 
Well, what can you do? We tried to at least save the filling. We transfer it into the mold. We'll have to redo the candy coating, but this time we'll do it differently. Again, we cover the mold with parchment. In the middle, we put a ring pasted with parchment. With the help of a hairdryer, we thoroughly warm up the mold. We cook the purple coating again, but something really scary happened here. At some point, the hot candy exploded with such a force that it knocked off the grate, splattered the ceiling, half of the studio, and got on my face. With serious burns and eye injuries, I was taken to the hospital by ambulance. If you want to see how my face looks now, then follow the link in the description to my Instagram. I should say right away, this isn't for the faint of heart. While I'm recovering, my dad will finish the skittle. He pours the purple candy down the walls of the mold. He files the uneven edges. and turns it over to empty the mold. Then he tears off the parchment and takes out the ring in the middle. The edges of the lower half are now coated with the hot candy mixture. Now we connect the two halves very carefully and gently. Once again, we go around, connecting them at the crease. We take all the filling we managed to save. Using a knife, we cut off pieces from it. We fill our Skittle to the brim. and close it off from above. The joint is filled with the mixture. We just cut off the excess with a knife. Using a burner, we warm up our Skittle from the outside to melt small chips and sugary crumbs. On a piece of parchment, we draw the S logo. Now we melt white chocolate in a steam bath and fill it into a regular syringe. With its help, we first draw the outline of the letter, then fill in the inside. We wait for the chocolate to harden and transfer it to the candy. That's it, our giant Skittle is finally ready. We spent a lot of money, time, and most of all, health on this experiment. If my dad hadn't helped me, we probably would have never finished this video. Our Skittle weighs in at 78 kilograms. Let's smash it. Hello everyone, today as I promised, we will prepare a giant donut weighing 120 kilograms. Let's go. We're going to the store. We bought six liters of butter, 40 kilograms of flour, forty kilograms of sugar, many packs of mastic, baking powder, starch, many different dyes, frozen strawberries, eight kilograms of condensed milk. Two boxes of chicken eggs. We put all this under the cash register. And all these products cost $356. We begin to prepare the dough. We open up the boxes. We take out the trays with the eggs. 
And now we split our towers from the chicken eggs. We split our towers of the chicken eggs and put two plastic containers on the table. Now we divide each egg into the yolk and protein. Nothing complicated, but we have 630 of them. It took two hours to separate all of them. Done. We have completely filled the containers. And now we take three large basins. We scoop up the yolks with a measuring cup and pour the same amount into the basins. Now we need sugar. We open up the bags. Forty kilograms of sugar is scattered into each basin. Also pour in one liter of water. With the help of a construction mixer, we mix them. The mass should increase in volume and turn white. Now you need six liters of oil. Open it. And pour the same amount into each basin. What kind of dough would it be without flour? We open it. And we scatter 40 kilograms into the basins. For the splinter of the dough, we add baking powder. Open it and put half a kilogram in each basin. And once again, we mix thoroughly with a construction mixer. In the process, we also added water as the dough turned out to be very thick. Now we return to the chicken whites. We need four mixers and one standing mixer. We scoop up the whites with a measuring cup and set exactly 300 milliliters into the bowl. And for the mixers, we measure twice as much, 150 each, and we fill them up. Turn it on. Right now, we have five servings of proteins whipped at the same time. We are waiting for them to turn into a foam. We send proteins from four small bowls into two basins. In the third basin, the bowl from the stain mixer. Gently using a spatula, we mix this foam into the dough to preserve as many air bubbles as possible. We made a small mini conveyor, and while one person measures and whips, the second, that is me, mixes them into the dough. And so for three hours. That's it, the dough is finally ready. And it's become much liquidier. The only way to make a large sized donut is to bake it in the custom made mold. It looks like they're just a factory one. We open the oil into the can and sprinkle it from the inside. Now let's glue on some parchment to it. You need to cover the whole mold with it. And finally, we pour the dough from all three basins into the mold. Done. 
we will bake the dough in our huge oven. Now in total with the baking sheet, all this weighs 150 kilograms. We transfer it into the oven. And push it in. But that's not all. The mold needs to be raised and put a brake disc with a bearing under it. Now this structure can be rotated very easily. Ignite the burners and we close the oven. We need to maintain a temperature of 160 degrees. Every two hours, we will slightly open the doors, pull the rope, and turn the mold so that the dough is evenly baked. And while the donut is being baked, we will make a cream that will go inside. We open up the frozen strawberries, pour them into a large saucepan. We put it on the stove. And in half an hour, the strawberries should defrost and let the juice out. Add two kilograms of sugar. Mix that thoroughly with an immersion blender. Now we add the condensed milk. Cut through the film and squeeze the condensed milk into a saucepan. Now we open up two kilograms of starch. Also pour that into the saucepan. And knead until smooth. In order to break up the lumps really well, we use a whisk. And add some pink dye. We mix that up. After that, we pour this mass into strawberry. Mix it up, and it starts to thicken. We need a thick custard like this. Unwinding a special bag for the vacuum cleaner, we cut off about a meter, and we dissolve it along. We solder three such long packages together into one large one. Now it turns out a very large pastry bag. We cut off the tip of it. We push the iron tube through and fix it with plastic ties. Now we cut off all the excess. And we fill the bag with our berry cream. That's it, it's full. We return to the glaze. To do this, we cut in half a lot of lemons. With the help of such a special machine, we squeeze the juice out of all of them. The machine squeezes the juice right to the maximum, much more convenient and faster than with your hands. Done. It turned out to be a whole bowl of sour lemon juice. Now let's paint it pink. The second thing you need to do for the glaze is powdered sugar. Lots of powdered sugar. We open it and send it all to a large basin. Then pour in parts of the tinted lemon juice. Mix it up. Now we'll get the consistency of a very thick glaze. For the last preparatory stage, we open up the mastic. Now this is quite dense. Therefore, we send it into the microwave. When heated, it is much softer. In four briquettes of mastic, we add the different dyes. Mix all that well with your hands until all the dyes go in. Done. We shift it into a square shape. We press the mastic with our hands. 
So we repeat the same thing with each color. Then we just cut it into slices. We get this kind of increased sprinkling. We cut all the colors like this. The donut is already cooked. We take it out of the oven and bring it into the studio. To turn it all in, we install a special cover. We snap it on. Turn it over. And unsnap the fasteners. Now we lift off the mold. And we tear off all the unnecessary parchment. Now it can be moved to the table. The shape turned out to be a little bit wrong, but in general it looks like a donut. We push in the cooking bag, and we push out more cream. Now for the glaze. Just pour it all over the top of the donut. And now the last thing, we spread out the multicolored sprinkles. Done. As I promised, we cooked a very huge donut weighing as much as 120 kilograms, and it took three whole days to prepare it. I think it's worthy of your like and for you to subscribe to the channel. Let's cut it open and see what's inside. There's just so much cream. Let's try a piece. That's a really tasty dough with an awesome cream. And there will be two requests for you now. Share this video with a friend and click on this playlist. There's still a lot of huge food to be made. Bye, everybody.